And I now recognize the delegate from Newport News, Delegate Price. I rise for a point of personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. The delegate has the floor. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of the year, the governor outlined in his State of the Commonwealth <coughs> address an idyllic picture. And I wish he was focused on Virginia today, because from where I'm sitting, from where a lot of my constituents are sitting, and from where a lot of people across the Commonwealth are sitting, that's just not our reality. The governor was selling in his talking points something very different than the lived experience of everyday Virginians. Unfortunately, instead of what we were promised, we've been seeing an agenda exemplified by cruelty. For example, we hear a lot about the other side being pro-life and that they will support legislation that will protect life. But words matter, Mr. Speaker. What does that even mean? What life? Whose life? Because protecting life is not what we saw this past legislative session. No, what we saw was an extremist agenda in full swing, more interested in retweets and revenge than protecting constituents' lives. And it seemed, seems like this will continue as we've heard promises to send down a bill to ban abortion and restrict Virginians' freedoms by taking the power away from individuals to make decisions about their own health. And that harmful bill that some in this room are so excited to patron will end up hurting people who need compassion and not cruelty. Maybe once the governor leaves Maine today, his friends here can go visit with other Republican governors and him and a few other states that have been caught flat-footed and unable to answer the questions about people whose lives are in danger because they're abortion bans and talking points. They are seeing the heart-wrenching threat of death that is becoming more and more apparent for real people that simply need their doctor's help. If only these politicians had quieted their rants promoting forced birth long enough to learn about human anatomy and hear from people like the thousands of experts, patients, medical providers, researchers, economists, and voters who predicted that this would be the outcome. And the sad thing about it is, even in the face of women dying because politicians are sticking to their talking points instead of protecting their lives, that this isn't the only area where pro-life is being tested by the facts of life outside of his mansion. And for those who may want to debate this, no amount of rhetoric will obscure the truth. Virginians will continue to suffer under this administration's agenda of cruelty unless it is stopped. The Republicans tweets and emails say that they vow to protect lives, but who they include in that is quite an exclusive group, a country club of sorts. And maybe that idyllic picture from those speeches in January was meant just for them. But to so many, pro-life is pro-cruelty. The other side's agenda is not pro-life for those Virginians relying on the services that you cut from the budget. It isn't pro-life to underfund gun violence prevention. It isn't pro-life to thwart research and solutions for the alarming rates of black women who are dying during pregnancy and delivery. It isn't pro-life to rip away the truth and facts about the African diaspora trying to erase our shared history. It isn't pro-life to ostracize, taunt, and endanger those who are different from you. Targeting the rabid anti-trans hatred towards literal children. An agenda hell-bent on disenfranchising voters, creating obstacles to access for services, using the guise of reducing um, regulation to lead, let corporate greed run amok, and standing by while systemic inequities ramp up poverty. None of that is pro-life, but it is pro-cruelty. And, and it seems, Mr. Speaker, that it's not even about protecting life. It's about having power over some other, somebody else's life. 
And another truth, Mr. Speaker, the Republican agenda does not seem to stand for much, but it is against so much against freedom, against equity, against truth, against women, against science, against renters, against dreamers, against those with crushing medical debt, against black owned businesses, against those struggling to make ends meet, against school children, against members of the LGBTQIA plus community, against workers, and the list goes on and on. And for anyone listening that needs receipts, all you have to do is look at the vetoes and bills and votes that came from the other side. No one can claim to support life and then also support such damaging policies that put actual lives at risk. Let's face it, y'all, we have a problem here in Virginia, and we cannot continue to ignore it. Cruelty masked by legislative language and misleading talking points is still cruelty, plain and simple. And despite politically motivated attacks on the truth, my colleagues and I... We know what we stand for, and just to name a few, we stand for those seeking health care. We stand for those seeking equal access to our democracy. We stand for those seeking good jobs with good pay. We stand for those who need a second chance. We stand for those trying to prevent gun violence. We stand for those suffering in dangerous housing under slumlords. We stand for those who just want equitable opportunities so we can all thrive. So today, or any other day, instead of spewing talking points that go against reality and traveling to other states for personal ambition, we over here stand ready to continue to do the real work of fighting for people right here in Virginia that need us to do our jobs the most. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.